Actually, it's actually not that unattractive. It's just, <laughs> just very glowy. Well, I guess we're on. Uh, I'm going with an inner light. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Atheist Experience. I'm Jeff D., the host of the show. Uh, sitting next to me here is Martin Wagner, the co-host. Uh, that's me right there. Hi. And our guest today is Arlo Pignati. Hi. Often uh, d does the sound for our show. This, uh, this show, the Atheist Experience, is brought to you by the Atheist Community of Austin a non-profit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. We are live February 11, 2001. Uh, the Atheist Community of Austin has weekly meetings every Sunday morning at the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop, 307 West 5th Street at 10.30 a.m., except for the first Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series at 11 a.m. in the Longhorn Room of Burr's Cafeteria at North Cross Mall. Our next speaker will be Matt Lum. He will be, uh, that will be on March 4th, and he's going to be speaking on the topic of gays and God. <laughs> ACA board meetings take place at noon, right after the regular meeting. Um, on the second Sunday of every month, that means today was a board meeting. Uh, there'll be another one coming around in roughly 30 days. The Godless Gamers is a spin-off group of the Atheist Community of Austin. They meet every Monday night at 7 p.m., at the home of Vic, Vic Farrow until we find ourselves a bigger place where we can meet. For more information, you can call our voicemail at 371-2911 or visit our website at www.atheist-community.org. Uh, this is our first show at this 5 o'clock time slot. This show mm -hmm. has been running for years, years and years and years at 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And... Uh, Recently, we were informed that for some bizarre reason, we weren't supposed to be in that time slot. And, uh, and they hadn't noticed it in all those years. And they never noticed it before. How bizarre. <laughs> anyway, here we are, and apparently we will be here for a while. Though, uh, for those of you out there who are regular viewers, who got the word that we'd been bumped to a different time spot, um, we're, uh, and, and for those of you who are new to the show, uh, we also occasionally run taped shows when, for one reason or another, we can't go live. And there's going to be some remodeling here at the studio for the next several weeks that is going to be keeping us uh, from being live for the next several weeks. But there will be tapes there, and for those of you who are new to the show completely, that's all new stuff anyway, though you won't be able to call in and actually chat with us. Well, the uh, remodeling starts on the 19th, right? But, but Vic is telling me that, like, Wednesday so. they're going to start packing stuff up. Okay, so, so we're there not There will be gonna... no studio here available for us to, to broadcast from. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. Um, anyway, but we should be, we should be, uh, <laughs> our tape should be running. We're rational, we'll cross our fingers. Um, so anyway, this is an atheist show. I'm, I'm assuming most people watching this are probably brand new, have never watched this before, have no idea what the heck this thing is. Uh, we're atheists, we come on TV to, uh, tell people what atheists actually think about stuff, rather than the, uh, and, and try to, try to overcome the myths that are perpetrated by, uh, religious leaders when they talk about atheists. It's, of course, in their best interest to say um, the worst possible things they can possibly say about us because, mm. you know, yeah. we're, we're a threat to their careers. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, but we're here to tell you what, what atheism is really about. Um, now, this is a live call-in show. We will put the phone number up there at some point, but usually we have some news and announcements and things to get out of the way first, so let's start doing that. Um, and uh, Arlo's got some exciting stories to tell us from his travels. Let's see. First of all, let's, uh, let's mention once again the We Don't Hate You, We Just Think You're Wrong buttons, which Martin's 
I'm modeling one of one. those for us today. Yes, uh, we might get a close up or might not. I don't know. Maybe uh, anyway, that's the, that is of course the um, the slogan of our show. We're always being asked by Christians, "Why do you hate us so?" We don't hate you, Christians. Mm -hmm. We just think you're wrong, and that's all we're doing here is telling you yeah. that we, uh, what uh, where we disagree. If I you think, uh, uh, if you watch our show, and, uh, and I know oh, there we go, Howard's going. For most of you, this is going to be your first time, and you don't have an opinion yet. There. But if you watch our show and you like it, and you see either Martin or I on the street, come on up and say howdy, and tell us you watch the show, and we'll offer you a button. Yeah, and even if you don't like the show, we'll offer you a button anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a quarter. Yeah. yeah, don't don't beat us up though. Yeah. Uh, the there is a uh, the National Atheist Ombuds is and uh, yeah we, that's not one of the buttons we're giving away free though. <laughs> but it's uh, cute. Well, because it's not the slogan of the show. Uh, okay. Well, mm. if there's a great demand for smile, there's no God buttons. We'll mm. make. Uh, we'll, we'll have to satisfy. No I was gonna ask you for one. Where was I? Any instances of slurs, defamation, or discrimination against atheists or other non-believers in the U.S. media? can now be reported to the National Atheist Ombuds by emailing ombuds at atheism.org. Please remember to include as many details as possible and a news source where applicable. Incidents will be reported to participating local and national non-theist organizations who have agreed to distribute press releases regarding the reported subject matter. Uh, yeah, in keeping with the, the fact that we're, we're frequently lied about and misrepresented, uh, it's important that we... Uh, that we have our own equivalent of the Anti-Defamation League. American Atheists has set up a DC protest hotline. Uh, then this is another another point I want to make. American Atheists, of course, is the most widely known atheist organization. It's a national organization. And Madeleine Murray O'Hare, recently murdered by a uh, creepazoid that worked in her office so he could steal her money, um, was the head of American Atheists. American Atheists still exists, but their offices used to be in Austin, are now in New Jersey, and they're uh, very active in protesting various issues of interest to atheists. And, and we are not affiliated with them. We're not affiliated with them, even though we're also in Austin. Several members of our group are former American Atheist members or current American Atheist members, but they're, they're separate organizations. Their, D, their DC protest hotline is at, uh, the phone number is 212-465-3107 for information and updates on their upcoming February 23rd to 24th activities in Washington, D.C. The 24-hour message service will provide callers with the latest news on the media conference scheduled for the National Press Club and the Saturday, February 24th demonstration at the White House. Uh, we'll get more into what there is for us mm. to protest against at the yeah. White House, <laughs> I think, as we get on the show. Oh, look, yes, there's some news so. you might oh, want to get right. into. Maybe you heard about that one. Oh, I did. I did read about this one. Why, yes, we, why don't we do news now? Let's do news. Do this for news. Well, um, really the main the main topic of interest uh, and, and concern to uh, unbelievers these days is uh, George Bush and his faith based initiatives mm. um, activities now that he is in office. He is wasting no time in paying back his IOUs to the religious right. And th those all came fast and furious, didn't yes, they? Yes, very fast and furious. furious. First last time we were on the air, it's been a while since we've had, we've had a number of scheduling difficulties, but uh, last time we were live, mm -hmm. our country wasn't a theocracy yet. <laughs> yeah, it was. And amazing. now it nearly is. Yeah, it was just run by this... Um, you know, philandering reprobate, but it, at least it wasn't a theocracy. Yeah, at least he wasn't taking our tax yeah. dollars to give to people who um, who believe stuff that we don't agree with. Right, right. He was just stealing White House furniture. But anyway, all the same. Um, Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> we were on the air the last time. They hadn't stolen any furniture. That's right. We're just... Oh, just getting across the message. We're not doing this because we're partisan. <laughs> uh, we're doing. Right. We're, we're, we're criticizing Bush because. And, he and is. in fact, and in fact, on the subject of uh, one of the initiatives that uh, Shrub has has uh, instituted in office, the whole money for faith-based social right. services. Um, Gore, the uh, the leading contender in the race, was also in favor of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. he probably wouldn't have set it up. Day two yeah. <laughs> in office, yeah. but uh, but there was yeah. every reason to expect that that and would have all the same kind of you know stuff. Lieberman was much more the televangelist on the stump than any of the Republicans were. Like like we enough. don't do enough for religions already in this country, right? Yeah. We already don't tax them. Yeah. Now we got to give them extra money. Yeah, to, I don't get it. To practice, of course, the rhetoric is that they're only going to be giving given this money 
for the purposes of their supposed charitable works, not any sectarian proselytizing. Yeah. Now, that's, now that's nice rhetoric. In practice, though, uh, it has been noted that that isn't always the case. It is um, a flat-out lie. Yeah. Because what are these things called? They're called faith-based charities. Mm -hmm. Now, in what sense are they faith-based? if they never mention their religion while they're doing the charity work. Precisely. Right? Yeah. If they mention their religion while they're doing their charity work, then federal tax dollars are going toward, pr toward promoting their particular sect. Yeah. And if they don't mention it, why well, then they're not faith-based. And, they can, uh, and it is already entirely legal for members of a church to set up a nonprofit organization that isn't a religion mm -hmm. to do uh, social services and charity work uh, and get federal money. That's already entirely legal and has been for years. Yeah. The, the whole point of faith-based charities is to take federal money to turn more people into followers of your religion. Yeah. I've and seen, the, I'm sorry, I'll go ahead. I was just going to say, I've seen many documentaries about uh, faith-based charities in uh, Dallas, and this, this is before government aid. But um, they were interviewing many of the, uh, the lots of homeless people who go there, and a lot of them will have to pretend to give their heart to Jesus, pretend they're listening yeah, to sermon. The they're making them get on their knees and beg for their food, pretty much. You know, get on your knees and give your heart, and just it's very degrading. Uh, there is an organization based out of Corpus Christi, which is run by a Baptist church, called Roloff Homes, and this is one of those places where parents who are annoyed at their rebellious teens send their teens for a little bit of, uh, you know, attitude adjustment. Yeah, and right. this place has been under investigation now for, I think, since 1985 for allegations of just out-and-out -out child abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a, um, uh, one boy was, is reported to have essentially been beaten within an inch of his life. Um, there's a case of another girl uh, who was told that she had to dig in a, like, six-foot-deep ditch for hours on end. And they finally told her, okay, you can stop if you jump across the ditch. And so she tried to jump across the ditch and sprain both her ankles in the attempt. You know, and this is an organization that is run by Baptist Church. Uh, they were, when, when the first allegations of child abuse were um, brought to light in the 1980s, I think around 1990, they lost their license to do this sort of you know, care work, right? And then Governor Bush passed this thing that allowed them to get back on board you know, with the receiving state funds and allowed them to once again you know, do their supposedly charitable work after having been suspended. And, uh, but now, now they've been, I think they've been suspended again. And it's all just a huge tragedy. It's a real scandal. Um, yeah. But there are several instances where this sort of thing actually has been going on in Texas with Bush's governor for a long time, faith-based organizations receiving state funds. And there's an, another organization, I, I can't recall the name of it, but it's one of these job training organizations. Mm -hmm. And they're known to have taken at least six to $8,000 of the state funds that they got to buy Bibles. And um, the central purpose of their whole charity was to tell people that by turning your heart over to Jesus was the way you got a job. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, mm. uh, yeah. Well, it worked for them. Yeah, I guess so. So it's um, just so, so dis disingenuous. And, and uh, well, it's not disingenuous at all. It's just outright, just an out-and-out -out lie. And the most, yeah. the most offensive rhetoric that the fundamentalists, you know, come out with in response to any criticism of this, these faith-based charities is that, oh, here we go with, again with all this anti-Christian bigotry. It's, we're just such victims, and they want to play the victim of bigotry card. Particularly Pat Robertson. I mean, he spouts the term anti-Christian bigotry at least five times on each 700 Club episode. And you have to understand, this is a man who has devoted entire hour-long episodes of 700 Club to, to gay bashing, uh -huh. you know, to Jew bashing, and to Islam bashing, and to any other kind of, if you aren't a Christian, we're going to bash you bashing that you can think of. And for somebody out there who practices wanton bigotry to whine and claim that he is the victim of bigotry is just... You know, it's almost, it's too stupid to be offensive almost. So, I'm sorry, yeah. Jeff, I've utterly depressed you. Yeah, well, you know, uh, the, the other thing is, of course, if this uh, faith-based um, uh, social services thing is actually going to be applied in something approaching a fair way, mm -hmm. then federal funds have to go to Satanists. If they set yeah. up a soup mm -hmm. kitchen, you know. Yeah. Same I'd like to I'd, hot soup. I'd like to ask the average uh, <laughs> fundamentalist Protestant Christian, right, how he would feel about his tax money 
going to support a, a Wiccan. Right. You know, Where you gotta, uh, you got to do some Wiccan thing in order yeah. to get your soup. Yeah. A lot of people try to claim that we're a religious organization. So I, does yeah. that mean we get a piece of that? Uh, uh, yeah, and you know... It's just not it's that we want thing. to. Yeah. We well. have a call already. I'm surprised that that phone board went up so soon. Let's take yeah, this call. Could it. we take the number down because we want to go get through Arlo's stuff before we go to callers? Okay. There in the control room. Could you take the uh, phone number down? Not that anybody can read it right now. Uh, <laughs> thank yeah, you. Thank you. And let's go to Jorge. Hello. Hello. Appreciate you guys uh, bravely taking on the opposition because uh -huh. <laughs> I think it takes a lot of courage to be an atheist. Uh, in view of all the evidence uh, supporting Christianity, that's where I such as place my faith. But uh, Wait, such as faith and evidence, such as well, all the archaeology, all the written records. Yeah, uh, that's not get sidetracked by that. What's your point, caller? Well, the point is uh, that we well, just your last sentence before you took my call that uh -huh. some people claim that we are a religious organization. I would certainly make that claim. Yes, you are a faith-based organization. Yeah, do you, you think mm -hmm. federal tax dollars should go to support us if we ran a soup kitchen? If, where we where we said this is the atheist soup kitchen and to come here and get your soup, we're going to tell you all about how there's no god. When when you when you strip all uh trappings of religion from from uh, an effort or an endeavor, that is an atheist uh, 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 organization or an atheist uh, project? Uh, no, it, it is a it is a secular secular project. I mean, these secular it's not what's atheists, the difference? It's not no no. See, there, uh, this is this is a common misconception. Um, it's often charged that we're preaching atheism in our schools by not talking about God there. Right? No, we're not preaching atheism in our schools. Is this the first time you've seen our show? No, I've, I, I've, okay. uh, when we'll, I missed we'll, church, you were there. We'll tell you, we'll tell you all kinds of things about atheism, right? We'll give you all kinds of reasons not to believe in God here on our show. Right. There's nobody in schools going to kids and saying, don't believe in God because of X. Nobody's, nobody is doing that. There is no atheism being promoted in public schools just because there's no religion being promoted there. Well, that's it's secular. That's, it's it's neutral on the subject. Well, as it I, th be. I think that's being disingenuous. Uh, when you say you got to keep your Bible out of the classes, you cannot pray. Uh, we don't want to hear about this creation theory, but we're going to teach you this this Darwinian theory, evolution theory, uh, which excludes any mention of of spirituality. Uh, that's that is mandating a. A religion. A, one of those is a theory, no, and one of those no, is no, not. No, one of those is no, a theory, one is not. Okay. No, evolutionary evolution is a theory, sir. It's, no. it's, evolution it's, is a scientifically established fact. Now, the various methods of exactly how evolution works, there are numerous theories regarding that. As far but as we as know for a fact that life forms, that organic beings, evolve. We know that through genetic species. But I'm talking yeah. about the the uh, general evolutionary. Every evolutionary theory that uh, all you know creatures came from from uh, one you know amoeba or whatever yeah, that has no. not you been know, demonstrated. Not you cannot what's... demonstrate oh. that. That is not we, a fact. We've done, is... we've done plenty of shows on evolution, and uh, it's really not an atheist issue. That's a science issue. Okay. Right. Um, and and so and let's it's still a theory. Yeah. Let's science. set that aside. Yeah. Let, because it's not atheism, right? There are plenty of Christians who think that evolution is an accurate description of how life came about. Lots of them. And, uh, and so it, it, it's just not... Well, we're think, still talking we think theoretical We think it's an important... Excuse me? Yeah, we're still talking theoretical. I mean, whether... No, whether these are actual Christians. These are not theoretical Christians. <laughs> <who are going. laughs> these are actual Christians. The Catholic who, Church, the Pope, accepts yeah. evolu yeah. biological evolution. Okay. So, I mean, wow. anybody, so that's anybody. really not an atheist issue. I mean, we'll, we, we do shows entirely on that subject. We don't want to get into it now. Okay. Well, let's go back to the let's, faith-based thing here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, when you when you divorce, divorce. I, I, I asked the, you a question. I didn't get a direct answer, and I'd like one well, if, well, I, well, if I may. Um, do you think that the atheist community of Austin, if we ran a soup kitchen, where we uh, where we said, "Come on in and get your free soup," and while you're here, we're going to tell you about how there's no God? Do you think it's appropriate for federal funds to go to that effort? Well, I think that is exactly what the government. Pro, you know, uh, food assistance programs are. They are atheist uh, yeah, see, okay. based organ, you so know, you efforts. You think that, that would be wrong? You think that no, would be wrong? No, it would wrong. not be wrong. Why? You won't why, see, you don't why see do, it. Why do you think that would be wrong? 
I don't think it I would be wrong. I'm just trying to tell you that. You think that's the way it is, but why do you think that's wrong? Well, he's saying he doesn't think it's wrong. Why, why you don't, don't think it's wrong? I, I do think it's wrong that the atheists have, uh, have uh, pre predominantly run our government and our society. <gasps> who? Who? Only when there. when wow. have we had? When right. have we well, had we've been all through this, and, and thank you very much for your call. We're going to move on at this point. Appreciate in your fact, form. The lack, of, the lack of Christianity in something that is not the same as the presence of atheism. Yeah. Atheism is not it is broadly defined as lack of belief in God. Lack of talking about God is not lack of belief in God. Uh, and uh, otherwise, every moment of every day that you're not talking about God, you're being an atheist, and that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, atheism to to promote atheism would involve to, would involve talking about the logical arguments against belief in a supreme being creator, okay? Man. That's not what's going on in our public schools. That's not go what's going on in, uh, in, in secular, uh, in secular organizations, uh, organizations yeah. that are doing social services, right? There's no atheist message. There's merely the lack of a overtly religious message. Yeah, and when, as in, it should be. When in American history have we had an openly atheist president? Or, or, le or political leader. Uh, yeah. yeah. What, that's Just look what's going on now. <laughs> he, this guy, he was saying, oh, the atheists have been running America for way too long now. I mean, that's just okay. one of the typical Christian distortions. Uh, and besides, calling atheism a religion is like calling baldness a hair color. Yeah. You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> or, or abstinence a form of sex. Yeah, or, ab or abstinence a sex act, precisely. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... Or, or drinking water is a form of alcoholism. I don't know. Arlo, what do you got for us? Yeah. Well, I, I well, actually... Let's go ahead and put that phone number up there again, because... <laughs> yeah, we might as well. Because yeah. now we're, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're close to being able to take calls like we intended to. I had an interesting experience. Uh, I was an atheist on Catholic pilgrimage in uh, Rome, uh -huh. well, the Vatican. The Vatican's its own country. I, I, I learned that recently. And... Um, and the, re the reason I got involved with that is I have a friend who's pretty much in between agnostic and atheist. He's a very Catholic family, and he knows I know a lot about both religion and atheism, and uh, he wanted me to go along with him because, you know, all he'd be doing is praying if he's just with his family. <laughs> so it was... <laughs> That'd be no fun. It was amazing. I mean, I had a great time. It was beautiful. The Vatican's very beautiful. But, uh, boy, is it... Uh, I, do, I just don't think spiritual when I'm in that place. It's very materialistic. The Vatican is just completely surrounded by gift shops. And talk about holy paraphernalia. I'm a collector of just silly religious things. Well, you must have blown your credit card on that. <laughs> Actually, I couldn't. I didn't know where to start. <laughs> I mean, everything. There's gift shops in the Vatican. And that sounds very... Wow. You know, if Jesus were there, he'd be flipping the tables like, you know, <laughs> and whipping people. Oh, there are billions of Baptists out there who agree with you. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, of course, they have their own shops, so... They have some wild things. I mean, who, who would have thought a, a dead guy nailed to a stick would be such a great marketing scheme? I, I mean, you know, dead guy on a stick plates, dead guy on a stick watches, and they, they even have the Mother Mary of God shot glasses. And uh, my friend got a few of those. <laughs> For communion, and, I hey, Catholics can drink, and they oh, have fun true, with yeah. it. They make it a religious act. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I wish you had at least gotten one of those. Well, my, my friend got a few. Okay. And uh, actually, Paul Wilson has one. I, Paul Wilson didn't I bring it to the... To my lecture, I you I brought one. Have. I think I, I you yeah, have brought one of yeah, I, I borrowed one from Paul Wilson. <laughs> yeah, they they got them. They got drinking all aids, kinds yeah. of things, and uh, they make religion out of everything. One thing that's frustrating is uh, I want to get postcards to send to friends, but they have to overlap the Pope over every picture, no matter what it is, even if it's a nature scene. It's just uh, I'm the Pope <laughs> over everything. It's it is frustrating. <laughs> But the Vatican's very beautiful. I appreciate the artwork and the architecture. I really do appreciate that. But, you know, but, uh, but I couldn't, there's just, just funny things I noticed, like, you know, why does the Vatican have lightning rods? Did they learn that <laughs> from trial and error, or did they just know from the beginning, yeah, we're going to get struck by lightning, let's put up some <laughs> lightning rods. Um, there was a lot going on, very crowded. Uh, through the week, I think 25 million people visited the Vatican. Mm -hmm. that, that's a lot of people, and very, very crowded. I almost got crushed. Because uh, there's this thing called the opening of the holy door, and you go through this door and you get blessed. Yeah. You know, and I guess I guess if you exit, you get unblessed or something. I don't know. But everybody's going through one direction, and uh, this is something they do very rarely. So everybody's trying to get through this one door. The Vatican has five large doors. It's the second from the right. It looks like all the other ones. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how they chose that. I mean, I, I, I have this theory. I mean, you know, you got the second from the door, you know, eeny, meeny, money, mo, catch your tiger by the toe, if you always let them go, eeny, meeny, money, mo. Second from the right. Now, that's my theory. 
in but, Vatican City, yeah. seeing this happen, you didn't ask anybody how come that door? Well, I, I don't speak Italian, or All right. I didn't. <laughs> And which are the they 50, didn't have little pamphlets with the Pope. I was with I was a, English I was with a bunch of American Catholics. They didn't know anything, but <laughs> it was so it was so everybody's very everybody's pushing and shoving trying to get through that door, mm -hmm. and uh, I just got caught in the flow and had I mean I'm an atheist I can go through any door I want but they wanted to go through it so I went along this, with it this and uh, one, yeah. it was so packed did you, you feel can lift any up tingly sensation when you went through the the holy door. Well, I did because I was being crushed. People <laughs> okay. are pushing and shoving. It was so tight you can lift up both feet and you just keep going through the crowd. <laughs> I'm serious, I tried not, it. Not if everybody did that. <laughs> <laughs> everybody. Well, they'd just levitate through and it'd be a miracle. Wow. I saw the Pope himself. You did. Uh -huh. And uh, he, puts on, he puts on quite a show. I mean, he's, he's in poor health, but that Pope mobile, it goes fast. I think they, what they do is they drive towards the crowd at a speed so people get out of the way, first of all. And they're like ants. They just flood around it. Everybody's just, oh, the Pope. And he drove off in a Rolls Royce. I thought that was pretty, oh, pretty yeah. stylish. And that but, was a, in his Pope mobile when you saw him, or was he up in his window? He's in his, well, I saw both. Um, oh. For when he spoke for New Year's, he was at his apartment. He wasn't even at the Vatican. It was his apartment off to the side. And boy, he's he's just tiny up there. It's just a huge one, a tiny little pope up there. And he spoke straight through. I didn't even know they didn't have a countdown or anything. It was very uneventful. He spoke right through midnight. He didn't mm -hmm. say that much. It was kind of funny because our, our translator. It, well, this, it was very brief what he spoke, and this is what, what our translator said pr pretty much. I'm not going to get it word for word, but uh, he said, "Hey, everybody, thanks for." Coming down here, and uh, especially for all you folks from a long ways away, we really appreciate it. Remember that all children are bright, shining lights, and so on and so on. She actually said, "quote and so on and so on." And I was wondering, did the Pope say that, <laughs> or did or did our trans or was, did we have a lazy translator? Well, yeah, the divine yada yada yada. yada. Shut the window and <laughs> get back to watching the game. I don't know what he was <laughs> doing, but and uh, everybody's been asking me, did did I get on TV? But you know, a lot of people there and. They zoom in on people praying, they zoom in on people crying, but they don't zoom in on people like me rolling their eyes through the whole thing. <laughs> Nature yeah. does not cooperate with uh, Catholic events, though. It was raining, it was uh. windy, it was freezing. The Pope had to take off his hat. I, I just thought it was hilarious. He, the, you know, nature doesn't cooperate with that. He had to take it off and hold it. Well, why, if it was no. raining, why wouldn't he keep it on? To protect his holy head. Oh, he had his, his holy canopy. Oh, okay. <laughs> and his, okay. Did the, did the gift shops, did they have little little yeah, little matchbox Pope mobiles? Cause I used to oh, they didn't. Yeah, oh, they, maybe they did. Because yeah, I used to collect matchbox cars when I was a little boy. They had the you know, equivalent to action Pope figures mobile. of all the Popes lined up and back behind glass, but wow. they were expensive. I, I Including the female Pope? Like Kung Fu Group. Oh, I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They don't go back that far. <laughs> action Pontiff. And the with evil the, Popes. With the Kung Whoa. Fu Grip. So, uh, we're being so blasphemous to, you know, now. especially beat up on Catholicism or anything, well, but, yeah. um... Oh, yeah, Catholics, Catholics are great, I mean, when I compare them to Baptists. We got an but, amusing little, uh, we got an amusing little news story here. Yeah. I don't know if this got into the national news at all, but, uh, in Natick, Massachusetts, a Natick couple is accusing the Catholic Church of forcing them to choose between their faith and their young daughter's health. Their daughter suffers from celiac disease, an intolerance to the gluten, gluten protein found in products with wheat, barley, oats, or rye. Um, it's like poisonous to her. Well, she can't eat the little wafers. Commun yeah. The little oh. communion wafers because oh. they're, they're wheat-based. So mm. they went to their, to their bishop and said, how about you, you, know, how about yeah. you bless a rice wafer for us that you can eat? Mm -hmm. And they said no. If it, if it ain't wheat, it ain't Christ, <laughs> they said. Uh, and uh, they said, well, well, she could just drink the wine. And they said, that's not, the, that's not this holy ceremony that you guys are telling us we have to, she has to have in order to uh, maintain her immortal soul. And uh, so, they, uh, they, they, so they left the Catholic Church, and they're going to become Methodists. Because the Methodists will bless rice crackers. <laughs> that sounds like a great slogan for if it ain't weast, it ain't Christ. If it ain't weed, it, now this is exactly, I can't believe it's not Christ. This is exactly what's wrong yeah. with religious faith. Okay. As soon as you start believing some crazy thing like this bread is actually and and wine becomes Christ's flesh and body magically. Right? <laughs> As you and it's important it, yeah. that it be exactly this for obscure doctrinal reasons. And you think mm. that's absolutely true. You do crazy stuff like this. Yeah. You take a little girl and say, "No, I'm sorry. If she wants to take the uh, take communion, she's going to have to be poisoned to death." <laughs> Great. Yeah. It, it's you know, wacky. It, it, we need ah. to be. It, it, people need to base their beliefs on you know verifiable 
evidence-based claims and not on made-up superstition. Yeah. But at which point it's not a belief anymore, if, it's, if there's evidence to no, support there is, it. No, of course there is. Nothing, you know. nothing we know is 100% certain. Well, but right, we should but, be aiming yeah. for much higher supporting, uh, much higher standards. degree of supporting evidence, much higher standards of evidence than this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because look what happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or we uh, had the case with the, uh, the, uh, the, the family in Kenya in January where the father um, basically quit his engineering job after becoming, I believe, a born-again Protestant Christian and claimed that he, on Christmas Day, God had told him that his family was to fast "Quote unquote until further notice." Hmm? Oh yeah, I heard about this story. Well, yeah, well, it, it's funny up to now, but the unfunny part is that the the police like busted down his doors, right. and his children were starving to death. I mean, his wow. eight year old child was weighed about as much as a baby. There you uh, go. His, I mean, his kids were like this close to death. He in had four children. Right, invisible voices in your head are not evidence of anything. Yeah. It's and so. The, and if you believe that, it's funny, what, but what it's those sad. invisible voices in your head say, no. you're liable to do something completely nuts. Yeah. Uh, we have another caller. Let's uh, go to Jonathan. Jonathan. Hey, how you doing? Hi, just Jonathan. Fine. All right. For you. Um, I was just wondering, like, what you guys do believe um, would happen mm -hmm. to you when you die, since you obviously don't believe in what in the Bible says. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Martin. <clears throat> okay. You take it first. Like, you take a short turn. Well, usually when people ask me about an afterlife, mm -hmm. I usually say, "Hey, it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm all for it." But, you know, uh, in the absence, I, I would prefer, I, I just, I'm the sort of person who prefers to, you know, as we discussed earlier, base my beliefs or what I do believe on what evidence shows. Okay. And uh, since nobody's ever actually come back from the dead to say, hey, yeah, it's great, you know, they got free cable and pizza and everything, mm -hmm. you know, there's no real indication that there's a heavenly afterlife apart from stories that are handed down by religion and culture. Right. So, to the best of my knowledge, <clears throat> when I die, the electrochemical activity in my brain that makes up my conscience will stop. And uh, and I will cease to be, um, you know. So you don't believe that you have a soul then, or what? Uh, until somebody, until there's medical evidence that there are souls uh, resting inside human bodies somewhere, I, I see no reason to believe there is one. That's Just true. like do you, you know, it, it, do I believe that there is an, an alien civilization living underneath the surface of Jupiter? Right. Well, you know, it's like there's no real evidence to support it. So do I believe that there is or isn't? Well, no. It's just there's there's really no point in having a belief on that subject at all in the absence mm -hmm. of confirming also, let's also go, let's I noticed, I didn't mean to cut you off, also I noticed that when you guys do refer to um, Bible-based believers more or less, yeah. you do refer, I, this is my first time watching the show, I just stumbled upon it, but it's, you usually refer... It's our first time in this time slot, so um, thanks for watching. Okay, um, you usually refer to Catholics and, and Methodists and Protestants, and they're all... Um, they're all children churches of each other. Catholics and Christians are not the same thing. They read from the same book, but their doctrines are two different things. Uh, so you guys, look, you, you Christians can sort that out amongst yourselves, okay? So I mean, as far as we're so concerned, I mean, anybody who calls criticizing, a Christian is somebody we're going to call a Christian. It's not our business to tell you apart. Well, I mean, but you, you criticize them, and then you try and make it look like that's the broadband for everybody else. Uh -huh. no, we well, no. we, we I... certainly recognize that all different denominations have different takes Mm -hmm. on the same book, okay? Mm -hmm. And we think it's all silly. It's silly in different ways, right? From, mm -hmm. from denomination to denomination, there's different silly things that they do. Mm -hmm. And religion to religion. Yeah, and we've been kind of, on a, we've kind of been on a Catholic kick this morning just because we had a lot of Catholicism-related uh, right. news. But uh, we're equal opportunity... Uh, 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 doubters. Doubters. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay. we... We, we doubt Islam and, uh, so and Hindu beliefs and Buddhism and any other claims of the supernatural just as much as we doubt all Christians. So and, you guys don't believe in any kind of spirituality whatsoever? None? Uh, yeah, I believe in a kind of spirituality which, where the word just means, like, your emotions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And your sense of self-worth mm -hmm. and peace and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, got, we have that for sure, but that, but that is entirely explainable biologically. Mm -hmm. and, and also, one last thing, because I know you guys have some other callers probably. Um, what would you say about, um, like, it, let's say in Revelations, right, in the Bible, uh -huh. how a lot of the things that are happening in the world today have been backed up by Scripture in the Bible. I mean, well, I'm really? Looking, there's I'm dragons and three-headed lions and uh, <laughs> yeah, talking that's, donkeys? That's just a representation of, yeah. of, yeah. of territory. We'd that's say, not a three -headed, actual three-headed lion. I'll tell you what we'd say about mm. that. We'd say that Christians have been claiming that it was the end times for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. Um, and that's, that's and true. So, and so 
clearly, it is entirely possible for somebody to read that book and read significance into it that yeah. isn't there. Yeah. And it's been going on for thousands of years, and it's still going on now. The thing about prophecies, and this is in, you know, another, another pop prophet that a lot of people put stock in is a guy called Nostradamus. Mm -hmm. The yeah. thing about them is that they are written in such vague and often poetic language that you can essentially, you know, like Nostradamus might say something like, uh, uh, an evil world leader will arise and millions will flock to him and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And people will essentially engage in a technique called retrofitting where you look at something going on that's like, oh, it, that's Adolf Hitler. Uh, Nostradamus accurately predicted Adolf Hitler. Or or Napoleon or, or whichever evil. Yeah, but they were world leaders, though. Yeah, that's but you know, it doesn't no, it doesn't matter. People yeah. then. It does matter it because that's no, they no weren't way. world leaders. Well, no, listen, people then thought that it was in in, in, in Napoleon's yeah. time. Thought mm -hmm. that Napoleon was it. Yeah. A lot of people thought, oh my gosh, he's the proof that Nostradamus was right, or that the or that uh, or that Revelations was right, yeah. mm -hmm. and they were wrong. Okay, and then people thought it was Hitler, mm -hmm. and. Uh, people thought it was Mussolini. People thought it was uh, various um, Roman emperors. Clearly, mm -hmm. there is that what's going on is people are looking at what is actually happening in the world around them and drawing analogies and then mistaking those analogies for actual factual correlations. Okay, well, what about, what, a, what about what about never has been, communist? it's never yeah. going to be. Jesus himself was, was an apocalypticist. I mean, in mm -hmm. the scriptures, he states very clearly to his disciples that he expects the end of the world to happen within the lifetimes of his disciples. So it, it, uh, Christianity from the outset has been this apocalyptic, end-of-the-world-centered religion in which this is the end times right now, and you must give yourself over to, to God and Jesus and, and have your soul saved in order to avoid you know, the, all of the horrible events are about to well, occur. It has, it has been that way since its inception. The so, things they, write, they wrote about were things that were going on disciples then. disciples right now. Mm -hmm. so no, no, I no, mean, no, no. The guys in the room with them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, those, are the tw those are the apostles. Well, the That's, apostles... That, the, 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 we apologize for misusing your terminology. Yeah. Okay, well, let, me, let me ask you one quick thing, all right? And, then, okay. I'll, and then I'll split, all right? Uh, okay. Sure. okay. Now, what about... Now, China, Communist China, has uh -huh. an, an army, okay? Yeah. 200 million men. Exactly. Roughly, but it's roughly. referred. It's okay. referred to in the Bible and Revelation. Remember oh, I that we're using that. the word roughly. Okay, go on. So, so how do you explain that? I mean, even I can even that. even uh, Mao, you know, said that they had that many. They had. Could that, I explain you know, that? I'd like to explain that. This is not well. Well, populations all over the world are going up. You're eventually going. You have a set number. It's going to go right through that number. Every. I mean, India is going to reach that number and go beyond it someday. Well, I mean, right. I know China has a population control problem, but still, come on. Oh. I mean, it's there yeah, and, and it's in the Bible. Just we've just we've just things. been informed by someone in our studio that China's army uh, numbers four million men. Mm -hmm. But even yeah. if it was that exact they number, two, I mean, two hundred million members, then they'd have. You know, I could I could well, predict well, an exact uh, population of Austin, and Austin's growing, and it's going to hit that population and keep going. I can say I was right. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So what? Yeah, inevitably, as populations rise, there was going to be an army that big. Mm -hmm. How was that significant? But how is, is it going to go over that? Do you think it'll go sure. over that? Probably, yeah. Of course. Uh, Populations will continue to rise. Yeah. Other okay. countries and will it, have armies it, that big. And it does That's say that they're, they're going to invade, invade Israel and stuff like that. So what China's going to invade Israel. Oh, that's <laughs> been predicted so many... What would that's China... kooky. What would China, a country that has uh, at least 40 times the land mass of Israel, get out of invading Israel? What does Israel have that China That's wants? That's right. Why, does every, why is everybody against Israel? It's such a small place. Well, Nobody, no, not but everybody's China's against Israel. We're not against Israel. Well, I know we're not, but a lot, of the other, of a lot of other foreign countries are. I think are. irrationally so, but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Palestinians yeah. are against Israel. The, uh, the, well, that's the Israelis that are against Israel. Yeah. See, Hello. What, you're doing, what you're doing, caller, is you're retrofitting. Hello. You're, yeah. taking, you're taking things that are happening in the world, and you're looking for correlations, and of course you're finding them because Revelations is written in vague Poetic, poetic language yeah. that you can interpret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And that's all you're doing. And people have been doing it for thousands of years. Yeah. We do a little segment okay. on the okay. show called the. the let me cut Report, something in here before you do that. Do this right now. Jeff. Okay. Hang we on. have this. We've been Jeff? doing. We need, to, we need to let Jonathan. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot for your call, Jonathan. Pretty sure. Right, call Jeff. Jeff. I'm keep watching. Please keep watching. I'm Apparently, back. I have yeah. not. Uh, I'm going out. Vic wants to. Vic, what do you? There you are. What do you? He said that that 200 million prediction was in the Bible. That's actually Nostradamus. Oh, oh really? Then, okay, so what does the Bible no, does the Bible make a, a claim of a number of an exact? Uh, I've number? read Revelations, and I don't I don't remember reading don't anything remember? in yeah. the millions. I read it, it was some years ago. I read it, so I don't I I didn't memorize specific passages, no, but 
we have this segment that we do on the show called the Rapture Report. We've been doing this since uh, a few months before the uh, start of the year 2000, when everybody and his uncle was interpreting everything in sight to mm. mean that we were about to have an apocalypse. And uh, we chalk these things, these failed predictions off week by week uh, mm. as the show goes by. Mm. Uh, here's the failed ones since the last time we went live. Oh, good. January 1, 2001. When, uh, a, uh, uh, excuse me, January 20, 2001, according to a guy calling himself Bands, <laughs> whose wacky website is defunct now, the mm. Bible says that the U.S. will be totally destroyed before the end of Clinton's term, mm -hmm. which was on January 20. He used numerous Bible verses to prove his thesis, and he was completely wrong. Uh. Also on January 20, Lynn Mises' understanding of prophecy hinted that the rapture would occur before this date, and the Antichrist, none other than John F. Kennedy, would be revealed, this despite, the, despite the somewhat awkward impediment that Kennedy was already dead. Uh, Failed. Now, shucks. here's what we got pending in the near future. It's, okay. They're coming more slowly now since they, uh, than they did in the year 2000. Good. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> good. <laughs> um, but uh, here's what we got for the, for the near future. Dale Sumbereru claimed in his book The Greatest Deception and Impending Alien Invasion, claimed that March 22, 1997 was the beginning of the Tribulation, and the Second Coming would take place between July 2000 and March 2001. So we'll be watching for that. Yeah, he's still got a couple... In got, March. He's got a month to go there. Uh, yeah, before March. Yeah. Uh, April 24 of this year, a group called the Lord's Witnesses have kindly figured out the true Bible code for us. Oh. Apparently, the UN will take over the world sometime between March 26 and April 24, I'm guessing April 1. <laughs> the UN is not no, that big. No one will be able to buy or sell anything without UN authority after May 2001, and a worldwide famine will begin by September of the same year. Oh, so, so we'll keep our eyes peeled for yeah. that. But uh, again, yeah, right. in, in, the, in uh, keeping with this, this millennia-long tr uh, tradition, Christians uh, and uh, and non-Christians, we've read a bunch of apocalypse uh, claims from people who were like, you know, mm -hmm. weird American Indian gurus and Buddhists mm -hmm. and all kinds of strange things. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of apocalypse, that's something people mm -hmm. like to do. Oh yeah, that's apocalypse great. Apocalypse has become a big business for uh, the Christian community. Anybody remember these books? This these left behind books? Oh, they're they're big. They're uh, quite this large. Is a, this is a door hanger. A door thing hanger thing that showed up on my friend Dennis's door uh, with. Uh, with discount coupons to see Left Behind in the movie, which uh, opened quite some time ago. Uh, actually, um, it opened last week. And in... It came out on video before, and before that, of course, it was a series of books. Yeah. In the year 1999, based on uh, all these assumptions, the year 2000 was going to be some kind of apocalypse, they sold a whole bunch of books, and guess what? No apocalypse. Yeah, but they're still selling. Let's and see yeah. more calls. The we're movie... Right, the, running, rapidly running out of Well, the movie time. opened at number 17, which is hardly apocalyptic. Woohoo! Um, so it's... Probably not going to do what they wanted Let's to do. Let's go to... I think Edward... Okay, Skip. Yeah. Hey, yeah. guys. Hi, how you hey, doing? Uh, so I, I assume all of you have read Darwin's Origin of the Species? I have. I actually haven't read the, read the book. I've, I've read it. I've read about half of it. And really? I've read more so, than most, the more recent. Yeah. What do you want... What do you, what's your uh, question? A simple question. According to Darwin, are the species still modifying themselves? Sure. Yeah, to, to a degree, sure. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, sure. ev it's, uh, evolution's an ongoing process. I mean... Hey, guys. That's not what Darwin wrote. Well, did Darwin write that they, that it's over? Right. He did? Uh, we will check that claim and respond to it can on you, the next show. Can we you give us... Maybe you're speaking of Descent of, of Man, because... No, can you no. Give us, can you give us yeah, exact give reference? Us a reference? He specifically wrote that species are no longer going through yeah, modifications. Yeah. Uh, we will check... I've never heard, heard of such a thing. Uh, 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 evolution was over, of course. It is entirely possible that... That, uh, that, That's uh, over that the, no, it, excuse me, uh, if you read the last paragraph of Origin of the Species, it says, has evolved and are still evolving. Read the book. Yeah, this is a guy, okay. this is Paul. Is that your, Wait, no, I, I would like to call. Yeah. Uh, what? we got to move on. We're oh, yeah. out of time. I just yeah. want to ask you, Spiel, did he get that from the Origin of Species, yeah, or okay. do you hear yeah, that from your pastor? You did. Can okay. you quote, no, I can have you quote us uh, page numbers? Can you give us, can you read the, can you read How the passage are you all going to be on? Can you, can you read the passage to us from the book? What time are you going to be off? Uh, I mean, because I'm minutes. not going to run into my living room and get in and waste minutes. your time. Call us back, Skip, and if you miss us this week, you can uh, catch yeah. us in a month when we get to go live. So I got, I got 15 <laughs> email, minutes. Email, go me, email me at pine at texas dot net. Pine okay. at no. texas dot net. Yeah, we want yeah. the information. We will check that, and, of course, we will correct ourselves. So you're going to be on for 15 minutes. But, yeah. 
Christy, okay. in more minutes. Hey, one more We've quick been question. Since five o'clock. One more quick question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have all of y'all experienced everything that this world has to offer? No. no. You? No, no. I'm just serious because. So what's I'm your serious saying, too? The question is is because you're commenting on what other people have experienced and you haven't experienced. And? And your point is? Well, then why, why don't you uh, focus on yourself instead of other people? Because there's a guy in the White House who wants to take uh, our tax dollars and give them to churches. That's been, going like on that. for, that's been going on for tens, and tens of years, and decades. Yeah. So has atheism. Thanks very much for your call. Yeah. Uh, you know, let's go to... What's the point of that? Just because something's gone on and on doesn't make it right. Let's go yeah. to Don Rhodes. Don? Oh. Hi. Hi, Don. Hi, Don. Hi, Don. What can I do for you? Oh, well, I just, uh, I was watching the show, and I want to say y'all look great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. coming out good. Thanks. Long time, so, uh, long so time viewer, first time caller? I'm sorry? Long time uh, viewer, first time caller? I have yeah. never called. That's right. I have never <laughs> called. Uh, <laughs> never uh, but, uh, Don is a uh, member I just want to say it is so great to, uh, to have the show back live on the air. Uh, you guys are doing it's a great day. job. And uh, it's it's really wonderful that you're that you're bringing the message out again. I want to remind you though that it's a new time slot, and there'll be new people watching. And there may be some things that you want to dig up out of the past. Uh, I remember uh, some really good stuff on critical thinking mm -hmm. uh, that you had, Jeff. That we uh, have all kinds of plans for the show, but again, we're going to be uh, tapes again for the next several weeks while this um, remodeling, remodeling of the goes on at the studio, and we'll be live again sometime uh, after that. Well, yeah. But this is the permanent time slot, right? This so is it. This will we'll be, we'll be uh, setting our VCRs and our, our alarm clocks to make sure that we catch the show at <laughs> yeah. 5 o'clock right. every uh, Sunday. I just, I just hope that our, our wide viewership from the, uh, the morning, morning time slot manages to find <clears throat> out where we are because there, there was sort of no time to warn everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you can check our uh, website at uh, atheist-community.org. Yeah, but if they're watching now, they already know, Martin. <laughs> well, I know, but uh, you know that you can go there for. Yeah, it has. If been, there's the any change of plans. Yeah. Well, I just uh, I just want to let y'all know you made my day. So keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Don. I'm out of here. Thanks for calling. Bye ye. Bye bye. Yeah. Well, let's um, let's see what uh, Edward. Let's go to yeah. Um, online too. Edward? Hi, how are you doing? You're Fine, doing well, how are you? How are oh, you? Not too bad. I watch you guys every now and then. Listen, I got a couple comments that, that I, I think maybe, um, maybe I misunderstood. Okay. You were commenting about any army would reach a certain mass of, of soldiers at a, any given point in history. And if you look back archaeologically or uh -huh. in history, you'll see that um, famine, death, plague, war, and all these things would... Uh, tend to uh, refute that argument. We need to bring it back down. I see what you're saying. You know, yeah. and, and so... I see what you're saying, yeah. I'm not sure logically, but, I mean, I'm not a... No, I'm not, I'm not but I mean about would, the number being accurate. Right. <laughs> yeah. so but I mean, I'm not, any I'm exact not number saying Lachadamas is either. <laughs> yeah, you know. here's, here's the thing, right? The thing is, if China underwent an anti-communist revolution like, like Russia did and mm -hmm. broke up into a bunch of smaller states with smaller armies, and then a hundred years from now, some other country had an army in the multiple millions, these same kinds of people would be saying, well, look, look, see, this is what it predicted. Oh, that's true. They right. said kings of the, I remember this, this argument, kings of the East, kings, you know, China's communist, so there's no kings. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to call, if they're going to say that's China, they certainly can say there's it's anybody. No, well, yeah, but you could also say that at the time without written. Prophecy. Supernaturally inspired prophecy, there's no excuse for it to be unspecific. There's no excuse. Why would there be? I mean, our own textbooks of history these days in the high schools are unspecific. But I mean, our, our half of them have mistakes. Our in them. high schools these days are not written by a being who's supposed to be omniscient. Well, these weren't either. Per, they were They're written more by specific men as than these prophecies. And, and, and your point? As if well, okay, getting, here's another point for you. I, I find this kind of interesting. Some higher supernatural source called God, where were they getting it? Well, let me ask you this. I'm going to turn it around on you a little bit. Uh, no. You've got, well, you know, you've got I'm a fish in front of you with that Darwin. You answer my question. Well, I'm going to. No. Okay. Yeah. Answer it now. Yeah, where, where were they getting where are these people getting their information from? I just told you. It's inspired by God, but it okay. was written okay. by inspired man. Inspired by God. Why was God not specific? Did he not know? Maybe he was specific, he, what, but the come? person if, writing it at the time did so, not understand fully because it was so gosh darn it's important a couple for thousand us to, years ago. If it was so gosh darn important for us to know precisely when this, you know, tribulation was going to happen. And you would think that would be an important thing. It never said it was important for you to know. If you read the book, and I don't think you have, 
It will say what? that it, you're not going to know when it's going to happen. Second well, why, of all, why would God why not know? Why are you of all, crying? You're telling me, you're you're telling me tell, I haven't you're read the book. You do know when it's going to happen. No, it doesn't say we know when it's going to happen. Well, you why? think you know roughly. L let me, no, let me ask right? you this. I haven't a clue. That, that nonsense if I did, the, I would be buying cans of Sam right now. Of China is meaningful. It's not meaningful. Well, that's it's not the dominant. The Bible says nothing about China that I know of. Yeah. Well, okay. Okay. You know, why wouldn't God want to know, want his followers and his believers and his worshipers to know these things? It's why would he want them to know? It's called faith. If you knew everything, why would you need faith? Yes, right. So <laughs> right. we don't. Why need, did? Why yeah, did? Why did? Gosh, we, good, good point. Convenient. Yeah. You're right. Why, well, but why? 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 But this specific topic. I mean, you would think the end of the world is a rather important subject. Why wouldn't God want His followers to know and be prepared? Why would it be important to your everyday life? Uh, to, what, to know, <laughs> to, to know that the world. I, I kind of imagine. <laughs> okay, I first of all, you guys I won't go to work read the book because I'm nowhere in the book of Revelation. The knowing when the end of the world is going. It never says that. All it right. never says that the world is ending. Whatever, whatever, <laughs> all doesn't. those things, all those things that are supposed to happen, wildly important to my everyday life. I'll, I guarantee I disagree. you. That's, especially, that's especially if I get to burn in hell forever if I don't haven't picked the right imaginary space pixie. To but believe you don't believe in hell. <laughs> yeah. You don't believe in hell, so why did, why does it matter to you? If it was real, it would be important to me. Well, right? see, now Why this is my point. You guys have a TV show. Why are you show. fighting so hard to dodge the obvious implications here? What uh, implications? You're making these wild you're saying, you're saying, accusations. You're saying, well, no, listen. Uh -huh. You're saying it's me? not important it for isn't. anybody to know when the, when the end, end times are going to be, right? Uh huh. And I'm saying, aren't I supposed to be damned for eternity if I haven't picked the right God by then? That's not, not up Doesn't to me. Doesn't that make it important That's to me? That's not up to me to decide. That's up to you and God. That's between you all. Oh. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now it's between me and God. Right. right? Okay. Does that God want me to burn in hell no. forever? No. Then he should be specific. He, he should did make it be clear. specific. Didn't you read the book? There's something going on with these prophecies besides nitwits just looking <clears throat> at things happening in their daily lives, uh -huh. happening around the world, and drawing parallels to stuff in the Bible, and and coming up with these prophecies that are wrong again well, and agree. again and again. He should have been so specific that it would have been impossible for some moron back in the 16, uh, 17, 1800s? I forget yeah. when no. Napoleon was. 1700s, I think. Okay. It should have been impossible for some moron in the 1700s to say that Napoleon, that Napoleon the was the Antichrist and it was the end times and get no. a bunch of people to agree with them like they did. No, I, I, don't, I wasn't alive in the instead, 1700s, and neither instead, were you, so I don't think you can actually make that. Instead, your God, apparently, if he exists, doesn't care if I burn forever in hell. That's Does the whole point care. of the whole so second test of the New make Testament. It so that it was obvious that, that, that he knew in advance what was happening. Yeah, you don't that, have to go. No if you did believe in it and you don't, don't go. What? what? Don't go to hell. What? Uh, Okay, we're okay not. so you're saying hell doesn't exist then? Fine. No, I'm, I'm saying you don't have to go. go to hell. I'm what's not going to believe because the there is insufficient evidence. So right? then why are you getting all, all uptight about it? Am I wrong to refrain from belief because no. there's insufficient evidence? No, that's your right. Great, okay, thanks for your Wait call. a second, no, you're going to cut me off now? Uh, we, we, are, well, we are down to seven minutes and we've well, got to no, take more Well, no, answer me this though. Left. A couple things. First, if you all Just believe in Darwin so much, you haven't, read, you haven't read Darwin, because Darwin believed in God and said that his theories could not be positive that's without God. That, yeah, that's a flat-out lie. Yeah, that's a lie. No, well, uh, he wrote it, though, lie. so now you you're going to call him a liar, but you got his name Now you give us a reference. No, you, call, yeah, you're Dar you're Darwin's liar. deathbed conversion is, is a lie. It's known to be a hoax. Next. Uh -huh. Oh, is that what you're referring to, the deathbed conversion? Yeah. I've read you know, biographies of Darwin, too. Yeah. His family was moving on. They don't... It was no, no, that was one thing. Thank okay, you very no, much for yeah. calling. There was no feel definition. Feel free to call back next week. Uh, of course, we won't be here. Uh, yeah. Feel free to watch the show. <laughs> call back when, we're, when we are live yeah. again. He, we're not a per sure precisely when that's going to be. He, he was getting desperate. And let's yeah. go to let's just evasion It's the same. Evasion it's evasion. the talking in circles and, and not Hello, not Bobby. Answering. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Bobby. What can we do for you? Uh, earlier, someone had called in about this huge number of soldiers mentioned in the book of Revelation. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 And someone there had said it was four million, and, yeah. and the person on the phone said it was two hundred million. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I found in, in the in the book of Revelation where it does say two hundred million. Oh, uh, it does. It's it's in the book uh, of Revelation chapter nine, verse uh, sixteen. 
Uh, okay. yeah, no, 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 I'm saying what the Bible says. Okay. I'm sorry. We, our guy, our guy said how big anyone. their army actually was. Mm -hmm. Yes, right here, um, chapter... No, 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 no. We're talking about in reality, not in the Bible. In reality, how right. many soldiers do they really have? And right now, oh, today, sorry. that's what our guy was saying. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm, we're not, we're oh, not trying yeah. to tell you what the Bible says. But we appreciate you pointing out the verse. When, what the what verse? Most people have um, a copy of that creepy when book. Look it up for yourself. When denominations fight amongst each other, that's when they're throwing Bible verses at each other. We like to throw reality at people. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, okay, but it was uh, chapter 9, verse 16. Okay, okay thanks for the reference. I just want to look it up just to be sure it's not Nostradamus then. That? that was free. Okay, we're going to take uh, Mary. We got <coughs> we're going to take four. one more call, I think. No, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mary. Hello, Mary? Hi. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. One of our it's regulars. Yay, day. you found Good us. So glad you, you found out where we were. This Fantastic. is a great hour for you. Yeah, we still wish we were 90 minutes, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they yeah well, did, we're working they, on it. We're putting the pieces back together. ACAC did some, and ACAC takes some away. <laughs> That's how it is for everybody. Well, um, I don't want to get real nervous. I haven't called TV for a long time since you guys went off. I just... It hasn't been as interesting. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, we know. Oh, well. We know. Well, yeah. well anyway, we're to get back into there's the a lot of really dull stuff on those access channels, okay? Yeah. And a lot of it has to do with dull religion. I want to first, this has been going it's in me a long time. I have to correct a misconception. I've heard people say that my atheism is a product of my teenage rebellion. I would correct that to say that my teenage rebellion was a product of my atheism, okay? Yeah. Let's correct okay. that misconception uh, That's not going to make him any happier, but <laughs> yeah. <for> the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's important to me, okay? They don't want teenage rebellion. They want teenagers to be good little doggies that do exactly what their parents say all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah they well, are. I I, I've had that one thrown at me, too. It's, it, it's like, uh, and I come back and say, I'm 34. Yeah. I think and, of course, I'm, the Bible says, what, uh, stone them to death if they yeah, misbehave? Well, yeah, petulant children are to be, uh, in, indolent, insolent anyway. children are to be Yeah, but I couldn't do it because I don't think God's a nice guy, okay? Right. Yeah. Well, and I couldn't follow. I couesn't follow the teachings of something like that. But oh, anyway, it's a nice doesn't exist then. See, I got news though. I got news though. Oh, what's that? What's that? I yeah. have my own foundation. You do? Yes, I do. And for, that is? Um, I'm gonna raise funds for animal welfare and habitat preservation, and I hope it raises enough money for me to personally give to my private causes or human rights causes, mm -hmm. like Amnesty International. I like to give them money, and I want more money to give them. That's why I have to have my own foundation. That's and it's good. called it's called Mary's Limited. That's the first time it's been said in public. Okay, but now I don't think we can do, we can yeah, we do can't uh, advertise. Oh no, uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm just saying that for the record. No, I'm not going to say. <laughs> right. Well, okay. <laughs> you've already said it, Mary. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, so we, we can't talk about that anymore. Yeah, we got to tell you what. Okay. You what, uh, well, anyway, I'm going to be watching for sure, and I am uh, again one more time, you guys. I'm so glad you're back, and I know there's going to be a few weeks of recorded programming. I'll mm -hmm. put up with that because now. Oh, we try to keep them fun, even when they're taped. Yeah, that's yeah. right. They are, but you get tired of seeing the same ones over and over. So kind of yeah. mix them well, up, okay? We do. We've taped some new ones. We just hope mm -hmm. they'll air them. Thanks, okay. Mary. Thanks very Bye. much. Bye. See you again. Bye. Bye. Hey, bye. Bye. And Mary, um, call the uh, voicemail number and leave information for for our group about that. And then, yeah. you know, maybe yeah, the we can announce on the air. I don't think. Yeah, we can't I don't, don't think we can so. get to rain. We only got yeah. yeah we in only last got few less seconds. than two minutes left. So we're not going to take any more callers. Sorry, Ray. Sorry, Steve. Thank you for holding. Um, but uh, we can't get to you because we're out of time. Yeah. This will be our regular time slot. We will be here every Sunday night at 5 o'clock till 6. Uh, the, we'll, the, it'll be tapes for the next several weeks while they do uh, their remodeling here. Yeah, so and keep we'll watching the show. Live again. Keep yeah. watching because it's, it's going to be new stuff to most of you out there. Yeah, and you'll get more information. Arlo, what else you got? I was just going to say, I just, I, I, I just peeked into the Revelations, and, and yeah, it does say 200,000,000, and then it go, turns into this total acid trip story with uh, serpents breathing fire on people and hurting them. <laughs> yeah. And he was saying that... Uh, yeah. Oh, the the serpents and three-headed lions are just the you know the the, the symbols or maybe the right. logos right. on the flag, but they're it sounds like a, a Gamera we, versus we Godzilla need to, movie. We need to remind or everyone out there that the atheist community of Austin meets every Sunday morning at the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop, 307 West Fifth Street at 10:30 a.m. every Sunday morning, except for the first Sunday of every month when we have our lecture series. 
at 11 a.m. in the Longhorn Room of Furs Cafeteria at North Cross Mall. Unbelievers only at those meetings. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, at the lecture series, it's open to the public. Mm -hmm. At our regular meetings, yeah. uh, of course, you're, we, we don't control the bagel shop. You can come yeah. in if you like, but we do not... Uh, we do not allow proselytizing at either yeah. of those locations. And I want to just quickly they're announce not, uh, that... They are not a target for you to come and try to make more Christians. Yeah. You have plenty of opportunities for that. And when I gave really quickly, my, my February TV Unwatch column is up on the AC website. Cool. So watch that. And Christians... We don't hate Christians. you. We, we just, just think just you're wrong. wrong. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. See Bye you everybody. next week. Thanks for watching. On tape. Bye-bye.